Hey guys, welcome to the final part of our three part series on creating stylized 3D materials in Clip Studio Paint using Blender. In the last episode, we made a medieval fountain and touched on some UV unwrapping techniques. But in this episode, we'll be working on creating a few house variations using the same sheet as the first episode and a new tavern sheet and creating an actual town square with movable parts, which we will later import into Clip Studio Paint. Let's finish this. Okay, our process here isn't much different from what we have done in the previous video. I'm still thinking about the same basic rules such as leaving enough gap between the different elements and remembering when to let the textures softly fade out so they won't have super hard edges on the model. Remember to use helpful tools such as the symmetry tool whenever you need. This time we want the building to have a sign and movable parts such as doors and shutters. You might have to draw these elements separately so bear that in mind. In this case, I had to cut the shutter that was attached to the smaller window later on. You can also bring in textures from the previous sheet in here and reuse them. Just as a final touch, I'm adding a thick line as well, in case Christina needs this for certain parts of the geometry. And we are done with this texture sheet. Now I'll go ahead and create a separate texture for the cobblestone street. To achieve this, let's create a pattern that we can repeat seamlessly. This way we can add this to our material library and reuse it in the future or share it with the community if you want to. Let's open a new square document that is at least 2000 pixels in resolution. To make the whole process easier, let's also turn on the grid. Usually the default grid that shows up is way too fine, so we'll have to adjust that. Go to view, grid ruler bar settings and adjust the numbers there. I ended up setting gap to 600 pixels and divisions to 1. Now I go ahead and start drawing the cobblestone texture that is going to be repeated. The grid that I set up really helps me out when it comes to lining up the edges. I take my time to add some textures and get some bold line work that will read well. Be careful not to leave really small shapes and details on the edges as these might prove to be difficult to match when this pattern is repeating. Once I'm happy with what I got, I right click the layer and select Convert Layer. Go to Type and select Image Material Layer. Under Operation, select Object Subtool. In the Tool Property window, check the box next to Tiling. Now when you move your layer around, you'll see Clip Studio Paint is already tiling it. But our design is still not quite seamless, so let's move the center point until it perfectly matches a corner like this. Zoom in real close if you have to, to make sure it's lined up perfectly. Now you can see right away where the gaps and mismatching areas are. To fix these, we'll have to rasterize this layer, so let's right click on it and select Rasterize. Now we can draw and paint on this layer again. I'm going to make the necessary changes now, so it all matches seamlessly. You can always convert this layer again to an image material layer and move it around to check how it's looking. Once you're happy with the result, make sure it's converted to image material layer and then go to Window, Material and select Material Color Pattern. This will open the Color Pattern window of your material library. Change the name of your layer accordingly if you haven't already done it and then just drag it into the Color Pattern window. And now it's added to your library. Pretty cool, huh? Whenever you need to use this pattern, all you have to do is drag and drop it into your scene. For our texture sheet, I'm going to do that, adjust its scale, and then rasterize the layer so I can draw over it. My aim here is to hide the repetitiveness of the texture a little. I erase some of the information, add some extra cracks and vegetation that might be growing between the stones, and then I'm done. Both reference sheets are ready now, so let's head over to Christina's part. You should be familiar with this workflow by now. If you aren't, please go watch the first two videos before this one. Using the same techniques as last time, I actually created a few new house variations by reusing the same reference sheet as the first episode. Our next building, however, is going to be a little bit different. 
For this tavern, we want some unique design elements to it, like a window flower bed, window shutters, a sign, and so on. Although this is a model comprised of different parts, they all share the same texture file, which is this reference sheet. The crown itself is fairly simple. Since it's tileable, we can go into the top orthographic view and choose project from view. Then we can shift D, copy this around and just kind of expand the tileable textures. Once we've put all the models together in the blender scene, notice that I've duplicated a lot of the same buildings to fill out our town square, we get something like this. Now some parts we want to move like the window shutters and the doors to the tavern. To animate these parts, make sure that the rest of the building is merged into one model, which you can do by selecting them and hitting Ctrl J for join. Just make sure that the shutters and doors and all of the movable parts are kind of their own mesh. Then in the Clip Studio Modeler, use the keyframes to animate the movable parts however you want. And make sure to name your layers and take screenshots to make it easier to distinguish what is what in Clip Studio Paint. If you want a more in-depth explanation of this workflow, check out the video we made for Clip Studio named Rig and Import Blender Models to Clip Studio Paint by Polycosm. Once we're happy with all of our little animations, we can save this entire scene to the Clip Studio Paint library using the Register as New Material button. And just under the 3D and Background category. And back in Clip Studio Paint, we can import our new scene and by pressing this little button, you can access all of our different animations we just created. Back to you, Omar John. Now that we have our town square ready, I want to show you guys how I can use an environment like this to help with my storytelling. I'm going to create a series of storyboards that depict a scene that takes place in this environment. You can use the same approach for a comic, or any other form of sequential storytelling. I have a list of shots that I want to draw for this scene, and what I'm going to do is to drop the environment we have just created into this file, then use that to set my shots. You can adjust your light source from the subtool detail window whenever you want to suit your needs. I'm going to have the background help me establish the composition and the angle of each shot. Then all I have to do is sketch all of the elements quickly, then once I'm done with it, I'll create a new layer and move on to the next shot. We also have some movable parts in this environment, which you can access by clicking this icon here. You can also add some 3D figures into the scene if you need help with the scale. Of course you can go as far as posing them for reference if you like, but for my purposes I just need the figure in there for scale. Make sure you adjust the height of the figure so it's in proportion to the environment. Remember to uncheck the box next to adjust head to body ratio with height to make sure you are not turning the figure into a child. Well, I mean unless you do need a child size figure of course. Alright. I'm happy with the size of our figure, so I'm going to place it where my characters are going to be and set my camera. Once you have an angle you like, create a new layer to act as a tracing paper, just like how I did in the previous videos, then on another layer start sketching. I want to have two characters walking into this town right there, so I start with them first. I will also rough sketch some background elements where there are gaps. Remember to use the built-in perspective ruler that comes with your environment material. When I need to draw another character, I just move the figure around to help me with the scale and go back to sketching. I go over my sketches with a cleaner line art, then block their silhouettes in just below that layer. I'm going to quickly indicate some background and the sky. I have also duplicated the environment, then rasterized the copy to keep that as my background. It helps to drop the opacity on this layer a little, so the characters stand out more. Once I'm happy with this frame, I group all the layers together, then move on to the next shot. I set my camera, bring in the figure for scale, then start drawing. My process for each individual shot is going to be pretty much exactly the same from this point on. For this frame, I can make use of the movable parts we've added to the tavern. I want these guys to open the door and step in, so all I have to do is click on this icon here and get the list of movable parts and just drag the slider to open and close the door. 
And here's the finished sequence. Let's go through the panels one by one. Instead of drawing the same environment from different angles again and again, you can easily create a 3D material for it. You can also use this technique for any kind of environment really, whether indoor or outdoor. If you are working on a comic for example that takes place in a house, you should absolutely consider creating your own 3D background material for that house. It will save you lots of time in the long run. And that about does it for episode 2. To recap, we used the texture sheet from part 1 to create a few new house variations in Blender, followed by the creation of a tavern using the new tavern texture sheet. And then, using Clip Studio Modeler, we created a whole town square that we could import as a background in Clip Studio Paint. This environment was then used as a base to create an entire storyboard sequence. We hope you enjoyed this little mini-series! Thanks so much for watching, guys! Bye!